meter, one meter. Measuring. 15. Counting and identifying plants. Seven is early, move and soil. These researchers from the Arizona Game and Fish Department are in southeastern Arizona, collecting data about the health of grassland habitats. Grasslands are a really important ecosystem worldwide and simultaneously they're also one of our most imperiled. Arizona's native grasslands are home to a rich diversity of plants and animals. They provide food for wildlife and livestock. They prevent erosion. And they help to replenish groundwater by collecting rain so it can slowly seep into the soil. They serve a lot of ecosystem functions, including important habitat for wildlife, particularly grassland obligate wildlife. Like pronghorn. It's the second fastest land mammal in North America, and it relies on open grasslands to see and evade predators. Too many trees leave them vulnerable to ambush by mountain lions and coyotes. Unfortunately, trees are taking over in many grassland habitats. Here in southern Arizona, one issue with grasslands is woody plant encroachment. And so this, this velvet mesquite here, is, is sort of our prime problem um, down here. It's a native species, but after, you know, wildfire suppression, some unregulated grazing, drought, it has really taken off and expanded its range. It is great at surviving. It has these fantastic roots that are able to suck up a lot of water and prevent other vegetation species from accessing um, that really important resource. And I would say this is fairly light mesquite encroachment. It can get much thicker than this. Restoring grasslands by removing trees is a common approach to the problem. It can be done with fire, chemicals, or by grubbing, which uses heavy machinery to rip trees from the ground, roots and all. We, the Arizona Game and Fish Department, as well as a lot of land management agencies and private landowners, put a lot of time and money into grassland restoration. And so we have a real interest in knowing if certain of those techniques are more effective as well as more cost effective um, to restore our native grasslands. That's why they're conducting this research, to find out which grassland restoration techniques work the best and last the longest. So we've been finding different sites that have been treated with different restoration techniques. So this plot is part of a, a site that was grubbed or extracted in 2015. They survey each of these sites using a variety of methods. One of them is line point intercept where we lay out 50 meter transect tapes and then we go along and at every meter increment, we put down a pin and basically identify each plant that the pen hits in consecutive order. So at the very beginning, I'm hitting a layman's lovegrass up top, and the code for that is early. And we take note of each species that pen intercepts, and then also the, the ground cover, because the ground cover can tell us something about erosion potential. And sometimes, you know, it may go through and it may just miss everything, and that would count as nothing in soil. A red. Oh, I got chinny too. Another technique we use is called a species inventory. So that's just a simple, you know, 15 minute search. They log every type of plant they find on a subplot of the site they're surveying. So that will tell us something about species diversity, species richness of everything, you know, that's on the plot. 0.83 high. We're also doing tree density surveys. 1.89 height because, you know, a lot of the focus and impetus on grassland restoration is removing some of these woody species. 2.17 width. We have subplots within our larger plots and we're simply One. going through and inventorying the number of trees and the size of the trees in there and then also whether they're alive or dead so we can get at mortality. Ooh, another black widow. And then lastly, we're, we've incorporated a visibility metric because some of these grassland obligate species, particularly pronghorn, they really depend on having long sight lines to feel comfortable in, in habitat. Do eight. 
So for that, we're using what's called a Robel pole. So we have an observer and a, a person that is holding a pole, and the observer is simply counting, you know, what proportion of of lines they can see along that pole, and that will get a sense of like the proportion of visibility um, of each site. So. We've moved from the treatment to the control plots. So these control plots have not been treated. So we're seeing what we would expect here, that there's a greater density of trees and larger trees. And we've also taken great care to match our treatment and our control sites in terms of ecological potential, meaning that they have you know, the same soil type, same slope, same aspect, same elevation whenever possible. We want them in the same pasture so that they're subjected to the same grazing pressures. After taking the exact same measurements on treated and control sites in southern and northern Arizona, the researchers will analyze the data. We have these different indices of grassland health that we'll be comparing between the treated and control sites, and then we'll use those to assess the level of efficacy of a certain treatment type. We can do this research and then hopefully, you know, it can, it can inform decisions by land managers and help us allocate our very, you know, limited um, human and financial resources. It's just one more example of how the Arizona Game and Fish Department uses science to make the best possible management decisions about habitat and wildlife conservation.